Honey, Bojo, we'll mourn in Ishnika. You wear the Nongan nose with my Ingan das. My Ingan dog. Which will go to the Ranga Donjiba. And Donaki, Ingan Dijamapi, Swakamak. My name is Will, and uh, my full name is Will Morin, and I am a uh, wolf clan. My spirit name is uh, my uh, north facing wolf, my Ingan. You wear the Nongan nose with my Ingan. North facing wolf. And. Uh, my uh, First Nation community is uh, Mitch Picotton near Wawa, Ontario. But I live here in Sudbury, Ontario with my wife and family, and this is where I work and teach. But uh, over 30 years ago, I served in the armed forces. I was a, uh, a medical assistant, and uh, it was uh, my first uh, short stint was uh, in um, 86, 87. And then I uh, left to go back to school, and after um, my, my college diploma, I went back into the armed forces, and it was in the summer of uh, uh, the Oka Crisis and the first Gulf War in 1990. One of the key elements of Anishinaabe culture that I'd learned, which I had been teaching for the past 20 plus years, was how important it is in our identity, our connection to community, connection to to place, but how important it is Indigenous culture is to family, and and that cultural connection to the land, and how we express that will be different for each and every one of us, and it's that connection, that understanding, that relationship, and that communicating a message has been key to what it is that has helped me deal with some of those traumas, not only in my time in the military, but also as the reality for a lot of Indigenous families of the struggle of just being Indigenous in the 21st century and how we continue to deal with traumas, intergenerational traumas, personal traumas and, and some ill choices that we make based on the lack of tools. So as a young person, art was always the tool that had helped me see other choices, other options, other opportunities, other perspectives. And it was the art of the world that led me to the spirit within me of that creative message from our people. And the work that I create are messages, images with a message. The objects that I make are tools of our culture. And that's what it is that I do in helping others in our revitalization and the resurgence of renewed energy to our, our culture and our cultural identity as Anishinaabek people, as Indigenous peoples. So my journey through the military and the memory of my time and the experiences that I had as many veterans is always with us. Where art has been able to help me process that. Anxiety being one of the key functions or one of the key uh, symptoms of individuals that have served in the armed forces. Anxiety, um, um, hypervigilance. When I was younger, I didn't realize shortly after getting out that it was the art that was my medication. Making art was my medication. It was the drugs that I took was spending up all night making a piece of art, painting and, and sculpting and, and writing and dancing. Those were the tools that helped me deal with and, and build on self-reliance of dealing with it. But there are times when I got weak, when it was time, when I was realizing I can't do this on my own. And that's where community came in. And that's when other individuals, both other Indigenous veterans, other veterans, and other Indigenous peoples, and that's where we found community. And in the community of Indigenous artists was an understanding that what we do is the ways of giving tools to help heal our people and educate the non-Indigenous population of the world of what it is our journey here on this earth as human beings, and that is to share. And in that sharing and in that human reality that we come together, and the only way I can survive is if I make effort for us to survive. And what it is that I give in that sharing is that opportunity for you to be human in return. And so the short song that I'm going to sing is, is uh, uh, a variation of a, of a welcoming song, a bindigan is in the Ojibwe language, 
the word that we use for welcome, but it literally means to come in so that we both benefit. That being de again, being de is, is the connection to our umbilical cord. Our umbilical cord links us to our mother and where we came from. And how important it is that being de again, that de in there refers to mutual benefit. And so when we welcome someone into our space, we welcome them into our home, welcome inside our being. And when they do so, we share with them, we visit with them, and we both benefit. And that is Canada's history. And the song beamed again with the use of the drum, the de we gun or o de we gun, depending upon the dialects of Anishinaabemwin. That that word de means heart. O de is your heart. And that drum, as you would say in English, but in Ojibwe, an o de we gun, this is the heartbeat. This is the heartbeat. And so as the light fades on this fire, which is shkode, ode, the heart, and ode we gun, that drum, they come together. So where there is that fire, that is fire deep within each of us. And if we understand that fire in our heart, that we will remember that message of that song, that we come together as humans to benefit mutually. When I say for us to walk together, Maseya, that Creator will walk. And if we ask in a good way, the Creator will walk with us. When we honor that important message of being human with each other, we will benefit. We will all benefit. And when we understand the role that Indigenous art plays within the, today's reality, is as a healing tool. A healing tool for all to become more human and celebrate together. Miigwech, hope. Oh.